Hello everybody, Greg Stagger here with a video to sort of walk you through how we can get rid of the big play button that shows up on the big blank white screen on your projects when you create them, publish them, preview them, whatever it is that you're trying to do. Um, our browsers have in fact introduced uh, some standards so that audio and things like that don't automatically play, right? Because this is really annoying. I get it. Um, if you've ever done some web browsing, uh, maybe you're reading an article on some website and then all of a sudden there's audio coming from somewhere and it's like really annoying and then you're scrolling all over the place trying to figure out where it's coming from to shut it off. Um, that's the kind of thing that the standards are trying to minimize because that's very frustrating for people. Uh, advertisers have taken advantage of um, the web for that kind of thing. However, this has a very negative impact on the e-learning that we try to create and provide for our learners. And they shouldn't have to click twice to get into the project. Uh, when somebody opens an e-learning project, well, I guess from my opinion, <laughs> we're kind of expecting some kind of multimedia to go on. That being said, I believe that Adobe has introduced this play button and forced it upon us so that every single learner has to click on the, the project and because once the, the standards for the web browsers say that once you've interacted with the project, all of these automatically playing things will go ahead and play. So by Adobe putting this in there, it's just forcing everybody to click and then everything plays and it's fine. But you know, when you don't, when you don't have automatically playing stuff, for example, or if your first slide that you create uh, is, a, you know, an introductory slide and maybe you've got a button that says, click here to begin or maybe you don't play your audio automatically maybe you put a little speaker icon in the corner and you let your learner know hey if you want to hear this narrated click on this button and things don't automatically play the and at that point the learner is engaging with your project and then anything that does automatically play down the road you're good to go and so this extra play button that we have here is really a nuisance for many of us. I know that it is. Uh, it is for me, and I know it is for everyone else because the questions are continually coming through in the forums. So let's take a quick view of what it is that I'm talking about here, even though I know we're familiar. So I got a Captivate open. I'm going to open this blank project, hit Create. And um, let's just get rid of this box here quick. And so now I've got a completely blank stage, nothing on it. I've got only one slide, nothing else. This is about as minimal of a project as we're ever going to see. Uh, so let's do the bare minimum. Let's just take a box and create it. And here we go, we got a box on the stage. No audio, no video, nothing that needs to autoplay. I just want to present my learner with a box. So let's preview that, HTML5 in browser. We wait for a moment and up comes the browser and oh look, the big play button that I have to click on, or in my opinion, should not have to click on just to see a box. So how can we get rid of that? Well, there's two ways. One is every time I publish a project, I can go into the published HTML file and add a little bit of code to that published file so that the play button is automatically clicked on, right? So I had to click on that, but I can use a little code to simulate a click. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So let's go ahead and close that project out. We'll come back to our Captivate project here, and I'm going to go to Publish to Computer. I'm just going to leave it called Untitled 1. Uh, I'll browse to my desktop here and we'll just go ahead and drop it on the desktop so it's easy to find. We'll hit publish. I don't need to preview it at the moment. And uh, so what I'm going to do then is let's go ahead and find that published file now. So we'll go to my desktop, 
There it is, Untitled 1, my folder. And here's my index.html file. So that's what it is we're looking for once you find your published project. So I'm going to go ahead and open this HTML file in, in a text editor of some kind. I have brackets. I have Notepad++. Those are my two favorites that I like to use. Uh, let's go ahead and open it with brackets. Ultimately, you want to pick some kind of a program that is going to allow you to see the numbers for each of the lines of code. That's going to help you find the right spot. So here you see the numbers on the left-hand side. I'm going to scroll down through this list of code. You don't have to worry about what it all says or does. You just want to find line number 95. And what we have on line 95 is a function that's being called cp init. And it's really important at this point. We are not deleting anything. We are not deleting anything. So you do have to be careful because if you type something wrong or delete something, you can hose this up. Now, I'm going to hit the Enter key. So I should be at line number 96, right in between this function call and this initialized equals true. And I'm going to start to put my code in here. There's three lines. I'm going to start with a dollar sign. And then in parentheses, I'm going to type the word document and then close that out. And then I'm going to put dot ready. And then I'm going to open up a parentheses here. In our parentheses, we're going to put, you know, basically the parameters. What do we want to have go on? And so I'm going to put a function here with no parameters and an opening curly brace. So this is the end of my first line. Now again, everything has to be typed exactly. Otherwise, it doesn't work well. I'm going to hit Enter. And now I'm going to say what it is we want, what function we want to have happen when the document is ready. So when it's all loaded up and on the screen, it's ready to go, do this. All right, so we're going to do another dollar sign, parentheses. I'm going to do a quote. And then I'm going to do a little hashtag. And then I'm going to type play image with a capital I close out with my quotes there, and close out with a parenthesis. So what we're saying here is, when the document's ready, do this. Go find an object on the screen that has the ID. That's what the hashtag means. It says, go look for an ID named play image. And after having dug through some code, I realized that that big play button on the screen has an ID of play image. And so we say, go find play image and click on it. And then we close that out. And this semicolon closes out the statement. Now, one last line to close out the entire thing. I have to close my curly brace. That closes out the function for the play image click. I'm going to do my closing parenthesis to close out the ready parameters here and then another semicolon to close it all out altogether. And so these three lines of code is what we're adding to that published HTML file. So, of course, we want to make sure we save it. So I'm going to go File, Save, and then I can close this out. And I'll just go ahead and refresh my screen here quick. So now, when I launch my index.html file, I should go right to my box instead of having to click on that. Let's see what happens. There it is. It goes right past that play button. Ba again, basically, we just said with the code, we're simulating someone actually clicking on it. And that allows us to bypass it and go right to the box. Now, the problem here is that, well, you would have to do this for every single time you publish a project. And that can get kind of annoying, too. So let's take a look at how we can do this permanently. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out. We'll come back to the project. The nice thing about the permanent fix is not only does it automatically do that for you, but when we do our preview, HTML5 in browser, it's going to get rid of it here also. So we don't even have to do the click here now. Let's see how this works. Go ahead and close that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my um, file explorer here, and I'm going to go to my C drive. I'm going to go to Program Files. I'm going to go to Adobe. 
I'm going to go to my Captivate program. And then in this list of files, I'm going to find the HTML folder. And inside the HTML folder, I also have an index.html, not the R index, okay? Leave that one alone. Index.html. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. This is the one that Captivate is going to grab and package up to create the one that gets published, okay? So I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to open this with my program. And again, exact same thing. I'm coming right down to 95 with the CP init function call. And I'm going to add my code. So it's going to be dollar sign parenthesis document dot ready and function and we're going to do our ID of play image and dot click on that and then we're going to close everything out just like that let me double check I didn't fat finger something here document dot ready function that looks good play image dot click that looks good all right and here's the next little trick that's going to come up the thing is when I go to save this now we're probably going to get some sort of an error file save ah yes error saving the file so uh, this particular file does have a little bit of protection on it, some security. So that's kind of what our message is saying. Permissions don't allow you to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to come back to my folder with my index.html file. So I'm going to right click on index.html. I'll come down to properties. And then I'm going to see a tab here that's called security. So we'll click on security. We come down here to users and we see, oh yeah, we're not allowed to modify or write to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on edit for my permissions. And I'm gonna come down to users. And then I'm gonna go ahead and check my modify and write. So that, that's gonna auto populate there. Hit apply, hit okay, and okay. Now let's go back and open this up. Let's refresh this real quick. Now let's open that with brackets. And we'll hit enter here. Let's paste that information back in. And this time we'll go File, Save. Ah, and this time I didn't get an error. It let me do it. So let's go ahead and close this out now. Close that. And let's go back to our project file here. Now, I haven't done anything else. Let's go ahead and try to preview. And look at that. It goes right past our play button there and lets us see the box on the first slide. Let's go ahead and publish this again. So if I go, let's go to my, uh, let's go to my desktop here and we'll delete this one. So it's gone. So we're going to make a whole brand new one. Go publish to computer. There it is. We'll go to the desktop again. We'll publish this out. And now, when I go to my file, I don't have to change it here. It's already been published with the changes I made to the permanent file. So when I launch it, there it is. Isn't that a beautiful thing? So. Google doesn't care whether or not I start out on that first slide. It's only trying to block that automatically playing audio. And so it's forcing the user to, to interact with the project to allow the audio to play. So again, if you don't have automatically playing audio, or if you've already built in some kind of way for the user to inter that interacts with your project before any audio starts, we don't need to have another forced click to interact with the project. Adobe doesn't need to force us to click the project. We can do this as designers. And uh, for someone like myself who builds a lot of applications that don't have any audio in them at all, 
I don't need anything blocked on my stuff. I just make a lot of web-based projects that help people through uh, tutorials on how to use equipment and stuff like that. There's no audio. There's no video. It's just interaction. And uh, there's no need to put that in there. So hopefully this was helpful for you. And uh, uh, again, just be careful when you're making edits to the files because if you do make a mistake, uh, it can throw things off. But anyway, have a great day. Bye-bye.